Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I show you how to paint miniatures from start to finish. And welcome to part 10 about the washes or shades, depending on which company of paint you use. So in the previous part, we base coated a ultramarine space marine in blue. And as we learned, the key was to get nice, even, thin coats. That way it dries really nice and even, and uh, you keep all the nice detail of the model still on the miniature. But that being said, when you're finished the previous step, you might ask yourself the question, what do I do now? So what's next? So once again, just to reiterate the method that we'll be using, I'll bring up once again what is some people call the three color up method. It begins with a base coat, in this case Macridge Blue, followed by a shade or wash, the mid-tone highlight, the edge or extreme highlight, and sometimes if you really want to blend the colors together, a glaze. And that is essentially what we'll be doing for this ultramarine space marine. So as I said, we've taken care of the base coat and it is now time for the shade. So that begs the question, what are shades and washes? Shades or washes, depending on which company you use, are specially formulated paints, which are very thin. Uh, they don't act the same as normal paints. And as I said, for GW, they'd be called shades, such as this Dragon Hook Nightshade. And these paints are specifically designed to get in the recesses or crevices. And here's a wash made by P3. Many people ask, what color of shade or wash should I use for a specific base coat? And luckily, the easiest way is to match the shade with the base coat. For example, if you do red, you can use a red base coat, red shade. Blue base coat, blue shade. Some companies you make multiple shades of the same color. For example, for uh, sorry, for GW, for Citadel paints, there are two different shades, and you can use these two different colored green shades to produce very different shading effects with different colors of green, which is pretty cool. And, though it may be a little bit unintuitive, very monotonous colors such as black, white, gray, or metallic, you can basically get away with using a black shade to go with all any of these colors for base coats. And this is just to mention a few specific colors. However, my favorite shade or wash is the brown shade. For Citadel, for example, it's called Agrax Earth Shade. And the kind of the rule of thumb is this shade will make everything look better. If you want something to look older, more worn out, more dirty, just more detailed in general, many people actually finish with an Agrax Earth Shade. So Two common issues I tend to see when people are doing their shades. First of all, uneven. They're not coated properly over the entire area that you're trying to shade. And second, there are breaks or very easy disconnects that you can see between layers of shade. And this typically happens when somebody covers the first half of a miniature, for example, and then allows it to start drying before proceeding to the second half. And the easiest way to fix that is do an entire area in one time. Once you start an area, make sure it is completely shaded before proceeding to the next area. And do not do another one until it's completely dried the first time. So, let's get back to our completely base coated ultramarine. Here is look, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, the details are still there, but there's no shade or contrast from the colors. And once again, as I mentioned, we'll be using Drakenhof Nightshade, the blue shade from the Citadel range. So, I began by shaking the shade properly, and then once again we'll be using our painting palette. So I just take some from the lid, put it in the palette. Now, if you want to thin down shades, I simply recommend using water. Um, just make sure that you don't use very hard water, or else it will leave watermarks essentially on your miniature when it dries. So try to use soft water or purified water if possible. I prefer using bottled water. So I just added a couple drops of water and I give it a nice stir. And basically this will dilute it and weaken the shades a little bit. 
Um, I tend to go with slightly weakened shades, and if I don't like the depth of color after one shade, I will let it completely dry, and then I will do a second shading over the entire area. For this shading, I will be using a fan brush. I really love using fan brushes when I'm painting a miniature um, for shades because they have a very large surface area to volume ratios. So they're great for covering these areas very quickly and with relative ease. You can use pretty much any brush you want though that will fit the miniature. So I take my shade and I just very easily glide the brush over these areas. And you see I'm just letting the bristles do their work. I'm not forcing it very much at all. And I'm just covering the miniature with relative ease. And this watered down shade, you can already start to see it. It just, it's designed so it gets in the recesses and it goes along the edges and then the cracks and it reinvigorates the miniature and gives all that amazing detail and makes it really stand out and pop after just a single application. And then I took the brush after carefully putting it on and just tried to keep an even coat. Because I added a little bit of water, it will take a little bit of time to dry. So you can do this very quickly and then just balance out the coat with the same brush, making sure there's not a lot of shade on that brush when you do that. So as you can see those side details, it really does help bring out the arrow and the parts of the shoulder pads, for example, the recesses in his boots and his helmet, and it really does make the, the details of this model stand out. And that's basically the technique. You can use shades or washes to produce really nice, beautiful gradients of color, and I will be showing this in future tutorials, but it's just a little bit more above the beginner level, which I'm going for for the early parts of this painting series. So as you see, I'm just covering the areas, and if I was unhappy with the depth of color after it dried, as I said, make sure it's completely dry before proceeding to a second shading. Shades do take a lot of time to dry, especially when you water them down. They take much longer to dry than the base coats or the highlight colors. So just give them plenty of time to dry and this will obviously change based on the moisture or the temperature in the room that they're in. And so, after the shade is completely dry, here's what the miniature looked like. As you can see, the color is much darker and there's a lot of contrast in that paint job. And now you can see all the crevices, the recesses, the cracks, everything is standing out beautifully on this model. And just to show you a quick comparison, here is what the model looks like on the left compared to what the base coated miniature looked like in the middle. And there's a big, big difference. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this part of my Miniature Painting 101 series. And stay tuned for the next part in which I will be showing both the mid-tone and the edge and extreme highlights. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.